This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. Creating a self-joined query involves relationships that exist between the records within a single database table. So when you're going to create self-joined queries, make sure that your data type of the interrelated columns are the same. So your data type must be the same. Let's go look at an example. So I'm going to open up my access database, and I simply want to create a query based on a table I always make sure that I name them things that make sense to me, right? So the table is called an employee table with supervisors for self-join. So let me show you what's here. Let me just double click the, um, the asterisk here to pop everything into the query grid and show you what we're dealing with. So every employee has an ID number, a name, and then the supervisor. So the supervisor field relates back to the ID field. So for instance, Nancy as being the CEO, she does not have a supervisor listed. But Andrew's supervisor is number one, which is Nancy. Jan's supervisor is number five, which is Stephen, as is Maria's. And then Stephen's supervisor is number two, Andrew. So you see how that works out? So what I want to do is I want to run a query, but instead of seeing the supervisor number, I want the supervisor's name. So here, I don't want it to say number one. I want it to say Nancy Freehofer. So what we're going to do is run a query to make that happen. OK, back to design view. Well, let's get rid of this data. You already know that if I put in first name, last name, and supervisor, you know exactly what we're going to get. We're going to get those numbers. So let's not even do that, because it would be a waste of time. So what we need to do is we need to create a join between these two tables. So two tables. I need a second table, right? Because you query the exact same table twice. Right click, show table. Let's pull the same table out again. And let's take a look quickly at the name. It just repeats the name, and then it puts an underscore in the number one at the end. Well, that's going to get confusing. So let's right click on this table, go to properties, and let's just rename the second table with an alias. And the alias, we'll call it supervisors. Now it'll be much easier to work with our data because it'll be much easier to identify what we're talking about. And if you wanted to, you could rename this one also because it's a, a really ridiculous long name. Oops, excuse me, I didn't mean to do that. So in the real world, of course, your tables are going to be named with things that make sense to your database. So we'll put employees. There we go. Now that doesn't actually change anything about the table in the database. It just changes it here in this screen. That's it. So now we have a table we'll refer to as employees, and we'll have a table that we'll refer to as supervisors. Well, now with these two tables here, what we have to do is we have to join these two tables. They already have like items in them, but we have to tell it, OK, I want the supervisor field to be related to the ID field. So now my supervisor name is going to be related to the ID, and watch what happens. So when I drop in the employee first name, the employee last name, now that's from the employee table. It's important which table they come from. So from the employee table, I want the first name and the last name of the employee. And on the supervisor's table, I want the supervisor. But remember, this field is a number field. I don't want the number. I want the name of the supervisor. So let's start with first name. So I want the first name, and it's from the supervisor's table. Let's see what happens. So what happens is we get Andrew. Nancy is his supervisor, Jan's supervisor is Steven, and all of our supervisors are listed. But remember, we had the CEO didn't have, Nancy didn't have a supervisor, and so Nancy's not showing in our Dynaset here because she doesn't have a supervisor, and that's why she won't be appearing in our Dynaset. Well, let's jump over to Design View, and maybe what you want instead, let's delete this one, let's do a Shift F2. Maybe what you want instead is to concatenate. Let me zoom in on my font size here real quickly for you. So maybe you want to name the field supervisor, oops, supervisor, right? And then we'll go with the field names here and the table names. So from the 
supervisor table. Remember, and you're using the alias names here. So from the supervisor's table, go get the first name field. So in Access, when you're relating, excuse me, when you're referring to a table and a field, you still enclose both objects in square brackets, but you separate with a period. So from the supervisor's table, dot, go get the first name field. And then we're going to concatenate using the plus sign. Put a space on there. And we'll concatenate another field on there, square bracket. Supervisors, square bracket, that's the table, dot, the name of the field, I want last name, square bracket. So now I've created a new field named supervisor, and I've concatenated the first name field from the supervisors table with a space, and the last name field from the supervisors table. So now, when I run my query, now I have exactly what I was looking for. I have every employee's name, and in the supervisor column, I have the name of the supervisor, not the number of the supervisor. So for me, that's much easier than trying to match up, oh, let's see, two is Nancy and three is Steven. No, no, much easier here to actually be able to see the data. So let's just review what created that. Back to design view. You place the exact same table in the query grid. For confusion, or to avoid confusion, I don't want to create it. To avoid confusion, I just renamed my table so that they made sense. And then when you build the relationship, you relate the field, it's kind of like a lookup, if you will, but you relate the field that you want to join to the primary key field in the other table, and then that allows it to actually go out into the data and grab the data based on the ID field, not the supervisor number field, and it attaches then the ID with the actual names from those fields. So it's a really fantastic little trick, and it's referred to as a self-join. Makes sense, doesn't it? Because you're combining the data from the same table twice, and you're just joining it together. So it's a self-join query. So go explore some self-join queries and see how you can utilize the benefit and the power of building your own relationship right here in the query grid. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.